like a mid-range, you know, I talk for I talk for years, I make some work. It's not it's you know not a, it's not getting high prices at any auction. You know, you can probably get it for free practically at an auction. So we need to pool our resources so that um, we can set up something to steward our work and take care of it and set up something that can give back and it can be, you know, there and you can, the group of artists can figure out what they want their, um, where they want their philanthropy uh, focus. Um, the, shared, the shared ideas could be give back to artists. For me, that's what's important. Because in this country, I don't feel like we respect art or artists enough. You know, go to any other country, you'll see there's a big difference. And, um, but not every artist is interested in being supportive of other artists. Maybe the new group would be interested in giving back to public schools or interested in combating global warming. It will be up to the group to decide. I envision lots of these groups and cells. I think that um, this is the, I think that's really important that artists do this um, to preserve the work. The group would be a working, and, I, and the way I've envisioned um, you guys to start one of these, or a bunch of them, because I don't think you should have too many artists, you should have maybe five, maybe 10 max is um, that they would be the board members and you would come together and discuss you know do you want to, what to do with the work how much money you want to put into this all the kinds of things that um, a foundation would need to run and you might have fundraisers i don't know anyhow the purpose of the meetings would be to discuss strategies about what to do after one or all die the cell would make decisions about what to do with the artwork what financial requirements are needed to support the work and the mission, as well as storage, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of et ceteras. How much artwork should be left to the, to the um, collective or the cell? That would be another question that people can answer. Because if you leave too much artwork, that could be a burden to a foundation to try to distribute it. I mean, it depends, you know, like, like um, the other panel we were just listening to, like the Demon Corn Foundation had tons of work, and who else had? And, and I think uh, so did uh, Motherwell. So you know, I don't. I, I'm wrestling with this idea: should I be giving work away so that um, that whatever happens with um, my work is not a burden to the foundation that it goes to? Okay. Um, how much art artwork should be left to, uh, to the cell? Because leaving too much could be a burden, and um, yeah, okay. And I, and I've decided that these plans should have probably happen, you know, like with this these groups that you're forming now in your head, and you're thinking of your friends you're gonna go talk to. Um, that it'd be good to do have these discussions while you're alive, not after. You can't do it afterwards. You know, no one gets out. No one gets out alive. Anyhow. <clears throat> So what do you do in the meantime? Oh, you can talk to your family, ask them if they're interested in managing your work after you're gone. I knew I didn't want to do that. Um, <laughs> donate art to museums. And I think this might be not a bad idea for somebody <coughs> like who's a mid-range artist like myself, is to donate works to um, museums which will accept them. And it might in the future see future um, gifts or gift purchases. A gift purchase is you offer them one thing and they buy something else. They get, it's sort of a two for one deal. And, um, or a bunch for one and on money deal. Anyhow, um, uh, and for most, of, and then for, there are artists who sell a lot of all their work, but maybe they don't, like, I always thought that as a woman I had to work 10 times harder, so I have a lot of work and, um, I, I suspect there are a lot of women artists who feel that way because, um, well, it's hard to get attention, anyhow. So and have people pay attention to the work. So, um, um, so, for, but there are artists who sell a lot of the work, and they may want to start holding back like one or two key pieces a year, only so that you can, uh, in the future give it to museums or the foundation can use it to sell for programmatic stuff or for placement in, um, in a museum. Okay. Um, another idea I have is to sell or donate your archives um, to, uh, to, to, that may help to fund the foundation or an awards program or your old age. Um, 
In America, there are many, many, many artists, um, which make, uh, and all of their work is, is um, I'll just, let's see. All of their work is part of the fabric which makes up American culture and thought. It would be a travesty for the life work, life's work of these many artists to be lost. That is why it's imperative and essential that the work be shepherded into the future, to be stewarded by an organization which will share the work with the public through exhibitions and educational programs, or by someone who recognizes the work's cultural value and someone who can increase the public's understanding of the artwork as well as increase the public access to the artwork. Um, do not put your dealer in charge of your estate <laughs> or make her the executor of your will or trust. This is a conflict of interest. Um, let's see. When, and I, I, I'm, because I'm in the process of um, thinking about what to get rid of uh, along with junk stuff. It's, I am. And I'm getting ready to wake up in the morning and um, I haven't started yet, but figure out what to throw away or what to destroy. So, um, <clears throat> throw when, away app. Huh? There's a throw away app. Yeah, <laughs> I know that one, but I know. <laughs> it's Japanese, yeah. Um, when you evaluate your artwork, be realistic. Decide if there's anything um, to destroy, or if there's work you are holding on to for, for sentimental reasons. The thing one has to be careful about, though, when destroying work, um, you have to be careful about it, because years later, the work that might have seemed less than will become more than in the future, in a new context, and, um, and when you compare it to future art production. So you really don't, I don't think really artists are the best um, judge that, but I'm just trying to lighten my load at some point. And you might want to do the same, you might not want to. Okay. If you start a, sound, a foundation or set up a trust, um, you saw a picture of Leah Levy there. This is, this is the kind of person you want, if you can find them. You need somebody like, and this is just an example of a foundation that worked with no money, so I'm going to read this in the So, um, Leo, Leo Levy of the J. DeFeo Foundation. Leo was the trustee of the DeFeo Trust, which became the foundation, DeFeo Foundation. <coughs> she worked on behalf of the artist to steward the work and educate the public about DeFeo's work. I have been told that this, and she did it with no money in the first few years. So Jay, when she died, Jay was a teacher of mine, and when Jay died, she left the money she had, which was sixty thousand dollars, to Mills to go to grad students when they, so they would get a stipend. You know, one grad student a year would get a stipend um, for after they graduated. I've been told this kind of person who would work like that for no money. Um, <clears throat> Uh, is a unicorn, in other words, a person who doesn't exist. However, I have seen what Leah has done, and she is not a unicorn. This is the kind of ED you need to look for, a person who loves the work and can champion it to ensure that others will fall in love with it as well. This is a rare individual. So, um, and do not listen to people who say it cannot be done without lots of money. I was told when I set up um, the, um, we're starting to set up a foundation. I was, I, was told, I wanted to set up a foundation because I didn't want my work to go to my family. Um, I don't have kids or anything, but I have brothers and sisters, and um, none of them really cared about the work, and they would have just taken it to the dump and sold the building that we had. So I just thought, I don't want, I don't want, they made fun of it when I was a kid, and I wasn't going to let them get anything good out of it when I was gone, because I'm the oldest. Anyhow, so, um, <clears throat> Uh, I was told that you had to have a million dollars. I did not have a million dollars. I looked at what I looked at um, different how different foundations were set up. I like went to a foundation library. I read um, what the mission statements of various foundations, um, what they said and stuff, and I cobbled together something uh, with that language. Then I put my husband in charge of calling the lawyer and telling him what we wanted. Then the lawyer would send stuff and then Gary would say, no, you've got to do this and this and this. And I would just keep shoveling papers with ideas at Gary and then Gary would talk to the lawyer. So you need somebody like that too. Somebody yeah, Gary. <laughs> yeah, Gary. Yeah, Gary. <laughs> um, and there are artists who have, who have, this is back to giving back. Um, there are artists who have been 
um, essential in helping other artists make their work, like people who are print, you know, have print studios and stuff. So, or people who are um, run a bronze fac casting factory. And um, for those artists who have spent their lives making, fabricating, and enabling projects of other artists, uh, you still may want to give back in some way. You can set up an award fund administered by a nonprofit fiscal agent, a 501c3, or you can donate trial proofs, working sketches, archival material that you might have, um, works which uh, supported the making of the work you collaborated on. Okay, and here's another thing you can do. Write your obituary now. You can add to it as you live your life. And you can even be aspirational. Write a list of goals to be included in your future of it. Docu oh, now you have to document, 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 document. Mm -hmm. Do you all do that? Mm -hmm. yeah. sure. um, even if you don't have a database, get a notebook, draw a little sketch of what it is. Well, actually, Get your phone out, take a picture, send an email to yourself, print it out, paste it in the notebook, write where it's gone, write the title, and then you have, you know, you've got to have a record of all your stuff. Don't, don't die without documenting, please. Okay? And if you haven't started, get started now. At least don't ever let anything out anymore that doesn't have a picture, that doesn't have a photograph with all the details and stuff. Okay?